Welcome to Declassifying the Paranormal. Here we reveal the secrets that sinister organizations attempt to conceal from the world, objects and entities that could shape the very foundations of what we think is, and is not, possible. Today we have secured documents belonging to the SCP Foundation, and will reveal to you the nature of SCP-5325. Item number, 5325. Containment Class, Safe. Special Containment Procedures, a barricade is to be erected around Platform 4 of the Canfranc Intercontinental Station, and the underground tunnels blocked under the guise of health and safety risk. Due to currently active trains still passing through Platform 1, a research site cannot be established next to the anomaly. Thus, Provisional Site 14 is to be established in the nearby town of Canfranc with a skeleton crew of staff. Description SCP-5325 is the remains of a train that served the Canfranc to Pius Line in 1932. SCP-5325 is currently located at an abandoned intercountry railway station in Spain. After a bridge collapse on the French side of the line, the station was decommissioned in 1970. At precisely 7.30 p.m. every day SCP-5325 will emerge, still worn down by age, from the nearby train shed and arrive at Platform 4. If a subject stands on the aforementioned platform, they begin to experience auditory hallucinations described as vocalizations in French. These hallucinations include speech and messages from the conductor, alongside the opening and closing of doors. The train is seen to depart at 8 p.m. precisely. When subjects enter SCP-5325, they will each find a single seat within the carriage to sit on. Soon after entering SCP-5325, subjects will hear an anomalous broadcast declaring a station close to one of their residences as the next stop. SCP-5325 can be seen until approximately 10 meters before the end of the track, at which point the front end of the train vanishes along with each coach in turn. All subjects reported blacking out from exhaustion after around 30 seconds from leaving the station, which coincides with the disappearance of SCP-5325. Subjects report waking on an entirely separate, seemingly modern train carriage at varying times. All subjects describe a spray-painted neon red heart on the door of the carriage. It is currently unknown if the spray-painted heart is a mimetic trigger. This train will typically arrive, as normal, at a station near their residence within five minutes. However, one subject described exiting the carriage followed by two more passengers that they reported not seeing on the train. It can be inferred that they are in a separate carriage to the other passengers, that occupies the same physical space. When exiting the carriage, the subjects describe feeling happy and well-rested. Subject Location of Recovery D73821, from Site 6-3, D73821 ended up in the 9 p.m. train passing through the, data redacted, station near Site 06-3. He was picked up by facility guards who had been dispatched to the station following GPS, locating the D-class device. Researcher Adele Researcher Adele was found to have arrived near his childhood home in Sweden despite not living there for three years. It is unknown if researcher Adele was able to influence where he was sent. D19203, New D Class, from Site 06 3, D19203 was tracked to, data redacted, Station, England. He told the Foundation this was the location of his childhood home before his parents died. This has been corroborated by official sources. MTF Row 12 Bravo New Recruit, MTF Row 12 Bravo reported arriving at King's Cross, London. Upon debriefing he said that he used to live in London with his single mother before she died. Permission for recorded expeditions through SCP-5325 is under review. Furthermore, a full interview with MTF Row 12 Bravo is pending. Addenda 1 Row 12 Bravo reported being able to read the walls of the carriage before he fell asleep. He described scribbling of thoughts and what seemed to be dreams of users on the walls. Most notable were seemingly newly written paragraphs talking about the fun and games of childhood, before money was a problem. A hard-working scientist playing with his son by the fire. Bravo said he fell asleep soon after, however, a small camera captured the subsequent proceedings. 
Outside the train there appears to be a Victorian-era Spanish woman with an umbrella. Clutched tightly in her hand is a reel of film with the name André Leduc. Signed. The woman can be seen entering a packed train carriage and falling asleep to the swaying of the train. The scene fades and Bravo reawakes in the new train carriage. During the reawakening of the Bravo the camera experiences a momentary glitch. Due to the increased information from the video, Bravo is sent back through SCP-5325. The new camera log is below. A man is seen strolling along the pavement whistling. He takes off the tag and smiles. Junior researcher Adele was seen to be written. Knocking on the door of a house, the door opens to the waiting arms of a woman, inferred to be his wife. The sounds of children echo in the background. He gives her a quick hug. Boys. She is heard shouting. Daddy's home. Two small children are seen to come rushing out of another room giggling. Adele sweeps them up in a hug. The door closes and the scene once again fades, Bravo reawakening to the same train carriage as the first attempt. A final test is scheduled to attempt to send the MTF Row 12 Bravo to a different location. As the Bravo enters SCP-5325, they reported noticing a strip of torn paper from within a wall panel. It seems to be photographic film of a kind, trapped in one of the destroyed carriage walls. Upon inspection, it shows pictures of men on bikes racing. Despite being severely damaged, the name Dre Leduc can be read. It is unclear whom this is referring to. Due to this newfound evidence, MTF Row 12 Bravo exited the carriage before it left. No ill effects have been found. Analysis of the photo film is ongoing. Thank you for tuning in. We hope that you enjoyed this broadcast. If you did, please subscribe, like, and share it around. If you have any particular case files you'd like us to cover in future broadcasts leave a comment below and we'll get around to it shortly. Tune in again tomorrow for more revelations.